everybody, welcome to The Bones Collector and today we're going to have a really, really fun video for you and it's going to be about the top 10 games that we love to play. And it's actually going to be more games than that, but I'll explain that in a minute. But the games that we uh, are going to talk about today are games that we really, really love to play and we can play them in under an hour and that's very important to us. We love some of the big complex Euros and we've played them. Galaris, Venus, things like that, Lisboa, I mean Vitalis, Anachrony, uh, Tracurian. So we, we do love those games but they just don't see the table as often as a game that only takes an hour and uh, that seems to be a sweet spot for us and uh, sometimes you just can't sit down at a gaming table for you know, 90 minutes to 120 to even three hours to play a board game. So those things don't really have a, a very much attraction for us. So today we're going to talk about the games that we can set up and play and put away in an hour or thereabouts. So without further ado, this is Lori, my gaming partner and my wife, and she's the one that has done all my videos and video editing. So she developed a list of the games that she loves to play, of 20 of them. I did 20, and we compared those lists and we had 10 crossovers, and we'll talk about the 10 crossovers at the end of the video, but first we're going to do the games that did not cross over. She had 10, I had 10. So uh, we're going to talk about these games and just say a few things about them and why we love them. And uh, and we'll just move through this as fast as we possibly can. Uh, let's start with Lori's My number 10. One of her number 10 games. There we go. This is Via Nebula by Martin Wallace. I love, love this game. game. <laughs> You're playing on a fog field. You can see all the little white fogs back here. You have to cover up the fog fields to be able to make pathways to get to the resources that are on the board to build buildings. And I like this game because there's two sides to this board. There's an easy side and a hard side. The hard side has more fog fields than the easy side. So it's a little bit more difficult. This game is not difficult. It just raises the difficulty a little bit by doing that. But it's got awesome components. I'm gonna open it, I know. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> I know this will take too long. Yeah, and you know, we've, we've actually had this game when we first got it, we played it, and we talked about getting rid of it. And as we played it more and more, we just we went from being a game we want to get rid of to one that we never want to get rid of. We really love playing it. It's got little pigs. I can't see them. The, the components are amazing. Here's your people, your buildings. It's got an awesome insert. I just, it's just a really fun, cute game. Yep. It's actually my favorite game by Martin Wallace. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> By Martin Wallace, and uh, yeah, we would probably like playing this more than Brass or Brass Lancashire, and <laughs> because, because it's quick, it's quick. It's uh, elegant gameplay. I mean, everything flows wonderfully in the game. It says on the box, two to four players, sixty minutes, and that's exactly what we're looking for. So there. Space Cowboys. Yeah, Via Nebula. Okay, my turn. Yep. Okay, I'm going to talk about Rattle Bones. <laughs> Upside down. Oh, Rattle Bones. <laughs> And Rattlebones is a dice builder, and uh, I did a video comparing this with Dice Forge. And if you uh, want to check that out, I feel free, and I think you'll enjoy it. But uh, I liked this game over Dice Forge for a number of reasons. Um, because Dice Forge, it just doesn't come with enough material in the box to keep us happy very long. It was very, it was lighter than this. And uh, I don't like to buy games that have to have an expansion. And I felt like that's what Dice Forge was. But Rattlebones, you don't need an expansion. It's a dice builder. You're simply gonna roll these nice chunky dice and uh, they have faces that you can pry off with it, this little tool they give you. Uh, as you move around uh, the board, Mr. Rattlebones Circus here, or, or amusement park, you're just gonna get uh, different dice faces and earn them to put on your dice so that you, you're building a dice engine is what you're doing. You just keep rolling those and getting gold and points. And uh, it's just a, a heck of a lot of fun. Plays very quickly, has a unique scoring mechanism in, uh, in it, and I've seen it in other games where the Mr. Rattlebones figure is moving towards the player point markers and the first one to reach Mr. Rattlebones as he's coming at you uh, when, uh, triggers the end of the game, wins the game. So uh, yeah, that's this Rattlebones. This one says 15 to 30 minutes. 15 so that's to 30 minutes. very quick one. Yeah, it's a really quick one and uh, I, I can't give it up. I, every time I play it, I love it. So yeah, Rattlebones. Okay. My number nine, Camel Up. Wanted a racing game, been looking for a racing game. Couldn't really find one that we liked. I love this one because you don't know who's going to win. <laughs> it's just, it's, most, it's more fun than skill and luck. Yep. It's just luck and fun, not a lot of skill, because you just don't know what's going to happen. But 
really enjoy it. They run around a little track, stack up on top of each other. It's a great game to play with a lot of people, or it plays good with just two people. Yeah. And it's Spiel de Jahres 2014, so we're not the only ones that love this game. It's a very, very fun, quick game that people can get out and play. There's a new version out, and we did not want the new version because the board got larger, and that's something that we don't like. This has a smaller board, and we like the pyramid uh, in this one better than the new version also. So we had to kind of uh, look around, and we, we found the copy at uh, a gaming convention. That the board's we wanted. not very large one at all. Of, yeah, one of the old copies. Small board. Camel's going to race around this track, and I'm telling you what, the camel that's in the last place could win just as easy as the one that's in the first place, and that's what makes this game so so doggone fun. It's ridiculous, And you actually. can play it with anybody. We play yeah. it with people that don't game, and anybody can figure this game out, and we laughed harder playing this game than probably any of them that we introduced them to. That's Camel Up. It's amazing. <laughs> Number nine. Okay, my number nine is Lords of Waterdeep, and it's a worker placement game. It plays two to five players, and uh, it's a very easy worker placement game. It has rather a large board, but it has a really nice insert in this game also. The rule set is very simple, so anybody can learn this game. Yeah, there you go. How about that? I mean, that, that stuff's important to us because it eases setup. Uh, when you're trying to play a game in under an hour, you want it to be set up uh, as fast as you can. And it's nice to, to be able to do that. And, and, a, and a nice insert like this uh, is, assists you in doing that. It's a beautiful game design. It's a really, really good game. And we've had it for quite a few years now. I'd never give it up. Lord's of Waterdeep, it's a tremendous game. Again, set it up, play it, have a great time in less than an hour, and put it away. There you go. Number eight, Quest for El Dorado by Reiner Knizia. I love this game. It's a race game. See who can get to El Dorado first. And it's just, you're building. There's tiles, so you have to get across the tiles. Um, you're building up a hand of cards. It's a deck and, builder, uh, and yeah, you have a market of cards that you're going to, yeah. And the market, yes. Yeah. You buy cards from the market and move your tokens around, and you have to be the first one to get to the end. That's the way it works. It's, it's a race, and I like racing. Yeah. And I tell you, every time we've played it, uh, whoever gets there first, <laughs> the other player is on the precipice. It's right there. It's yeah. right there, either it's ready to step in or two spaces behind or something. It's going to be close every time you play it, and it's fun with that deck building mechanism because you just get more and more benefits, and you're like, oh my gosh, I get to do this now, I get to do that, and you're, you're moving faster and faster because your deck is getting better and better, and, and uh, boy, it's a lot of fun. Quest for El Dorado. I don't think it gets the acclaim that it deserves. Rainer Canizia, what a great board game designer, yeah. and, and this is one you can, again, set it up, play it, put it away in an hour. It's wonderful. Yeah. Could have very easily been on my list for sure. Okay, my number eight, eight. is that we're on? It's Selenia by Sebastian Dujardin, and he is one of the co-designers on Trois, one of my favorite games of all time, but it plays a lot longer than 60 minutes. <laughs> and then Vincent Dutre does the art in this game. He's one of my favorite board game artists also. So I was naturally attracted to this game. I wanted to play it, and uh, I watched it play first before I bought it, and I bought it, and I love it. The mechanism in this game, it has a modular board that is constantly moving. And as one piece comes off the bottom, it goes back to the top, uh, cards fall off and gives you different benefits. And I tell you what, it's so much fun. Uh, it's one of those games that the first time I played it, I was just so fascinated and enjoyed myself so much that I knew it would be one of my top games, one of my favorite games. of. Uh, and it has boards too that allow you to make it easier yeah. or harder. Yeah, the player boards you can flip over from side to side. One, one side is easier than the other. So that's Selenia. Yeah, check that out. It's a wonderful game. Okay, we're on number seven. Luxor by Rudiger Dorn. It was nominated for the Spiel des Jahres in 2018. Should have won. It didn't win, but it should have. <laughs> You start here and work your way into the center, and you're, it's a race again to try to get to the center of the... The tomb, I believe. Of the, yeah, the, the, in, the tomb and get the sarcophagus. And it's got a very unique way that you choose cards out of your hand. You have to put the cards in your hand in a specific order when you pick them up, and you play the cards on yeah. the left side yeah. or the right side. You can't play anything else. You have to play the one on the far left or the far right, and you, when you pick up your cards, you have to make sure you put them in your hand correctly. There are some cards that let you play different sequence, but mostly that's what you have to do, and that's that's what I think is unique about this game is the way that you play the cards. Yeah, but yeah, it's that, a lot of it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that hand management thing is awesome. Uh, you have to plan uh, 
how you're going to use those cards and when. So it's a timing thing with your hand. And uh, Rudy Gadorn, of course, he's, he's done Istanbul and some other games that are fabulous that we love. And he's an excellent board game designer. Luxor should have won the Spiel des Jahres, in my opinion. <laughs> Azul won it, and uh, we played Azul one time and realized how mean it was, and it wasn't for us. Uh, but this one is uh, an excellent game. Anybody can play it. But it's Queen Games, so the components are fantastic. They do a great job with their games. Yeah. Excellent. Luxor. Yay! My number seven, yay! Royal Palaces. Royal Palaces is designed by Javier Georges, and he is also one of the co-designers with uh, Sebastian Desjardins uh, of Trois. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to plug Trois a few times. That's <laughs> Trois is in the Bones Collector Hall of Fame. And uh, that's, uh, but this game is so fabulous. You have a set of nine tiles, I believe, that represent rooms in the palace. And then it has a separate board full of small square tiles called nobles. It's so fun to try to uh, weave together that movement in throughout the palace with that tile board, trying to acquire those nobles to give you more and more benefits so that you can uh, beat your opponent. And uh, yeah, Royal <laughs> Palace is, I, again, another one I fell in love with immediately. And it's got variable setup because the nine tiles that you lay out don't always go out in the same order every time you put them out. Yeah. You you mix them up. And it says 60 to 90 minutes, but Laura and I play this in an hour. Uh, very easy game to play and fast, and uh, we just, we fell in love with this game. So, yeah, Royal Palaces. All right, six. All right, number six. Let's go, go, go. Fuse. Get these people back. By Kane Klenko. This is just a game full of nothing but a big bag of dice and a pile of cards. So these cards are bombs, and you have to match. I'll just get one. And this is real time, by the way. It's a real-time game. There's an app that runs with it and ticks down and yells at you if you're not doing it fast enough. And you have to roll the dice, pick dice, complete the bombs, and get through this pile before the 10-minute ten, the ten minute timer goes out. Yeah, so you're trying to defuse these things because it's going to blow you up. That's what's going to happen. So it's a 10-minute game, whether you like it or not. It's tense. It's <laughs> tense, man. And that app, she just insults you. Yeah. yeah. Are, you're, are, you're, are you even trying? Are you trying? You're going you're gonna to die. Yeah. We're yeah. all going to die. Yeah. yeah. We're all going to die. So it's a lot of fun. When we play it with the grandkids, we can't use the app because they get stressed out by the lady yelling at us. Yeah. But we like the lady yelling at us. But it's a 10-minute timer, so here's a game that only takes 10, 10 minutes. minutes. And yep. it's a blast. And, and it's called Fuse, yeah. By Kane Clanko. Kane Clanko. We have another game by Kane Clanko. Another real-time game called what is that one? Uh, Flatline. Flatline. And it's that could have easily been number yeah. six because I love that one as it's well. It's just as fun. Yeah. Okay, my number six. Yeah. Right. Yep. One, two, three. Yeah. Is Village by uh, Inca and Marcus Brand, and I love Inca and Marcus Brand. They're, they're wonderful board game designers, and this game is magnificent for us. The thing that uh, I like about it, what sets it apart, is it has time. Uh, time is the currency in this game, and because of that, the villagers that you use for worker placement have numbers on them, and they actually get old and die, and you put them in a cemetery. That is so cool, and it doesn't get enough people talking about that. That is so creative, because it's just like real life. You know, I go to work, every, you know, and eventually I'm going to die and go to the cemetery. Well, that's what happens in this game, and your villagers just get old, and, they, and you have to decide which ones you're going to kill off, so that, that's pretty cool, too. Uh, you know, this one's going to die. I'm going to put him in the cemetery. But you get points for how you do that. Uh, put them in the cemetery. So uh, it's Village by Inca Marcus Brand. This likes Brand. to kill people. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> this game is magnificent. Needs nothing. Again, uh, kind of a medium complexity worker placement game. It's a blast. Village. We also have the dice version of that game. That's the only game we own that we actually own the game and the dice version. Yes. Both. Yes. Because most dice versions we don't really care for. Uh, but... Ink and Marcus did such a nice job with the dice version of Village. It's called My Village that we really, really love it also. Okay, number five. Number five. Oh, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Gizmos by Phil Walker Harding. Uh, we have a lot of games by Phil Walker Harding that we really, really enjoy. I just, I love this one because I like playing with marbles. <laughs> it's an engine building game. The little marbles come down out of the container. You're, you're building up your engine down here with cards, and you can put some chain reactions together. I don't usually win, but I love the game. Well, the, yeah, those marbles that represent energy cubes, and uh, this engine that you build up of cards can get so huge that it's hard to keep track of everything, it, and it builds up very quickly. So uh, it's a wonderfully fun, fast game. This is a game by, what do you say now? I think it's Come On. Come On Games, yeah. And Phil Walker Harding's a magnificent designer. And we just love playing this game. The first time we played it, we adored it and knew we were going to put it in our library. So, yeah. 
Gizmos. It's number five. Yeah, great. My number five, Pioneer Days by Tasty Minstrel Games. I played this three or four weeks ago um, at the Orlando Games Con, and I, oh, gosh, I mean, as soon as we played it, I told Laura, nah, we're getting this game. <laughs> And we won a gift certificate at the con, and I immediately, uh, after the con, went out and bought this game. But it's a dice drafter, uh, which I love drafting dice. And uh, it has a disaster track on it with four different disasters that you have to keep an eye on the whole time. It takes place in the Old West. And Taste Your Minstrel Games, uh, easily one of my favorite board game publishers in the business. Uh, the component-wise, it's a beautiful production. And uh, this game plays two to four players in 45 to minutes to an hour. It probably takes us an hour. And you get little cows. And you get little cows. I mean, it's so cute. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, just a, a fun, super fun game. And uh, yeah. I don't, know, I don't know. I can't say enough about it, but that's Pioneer Days. Okay, number four is Copenhagen. Again, another Queen Games. I'm gonna take the sleeve off because it's gonna slide. This is this game is like playing Tetris. You're building up your your fronts of your houses with pet Tetris shaped pieces. I love playing Tetris. This is a Tetris board game. It's very pretty. Quick and easy to learn how to play. It is a Tetris style uh, game, and you're just going to be selecting cards of different colors to try to put together your, your uh, strategy for how you're going to lay those tiles on your board. And I'm not very good at uh, Tetris. Lori's a lot better at it than I am, so she usually wins this game, but I have a lot of fun playing it. Get a uh, little house, yeah. and you're trying to build up the front of your house. Yeah, wonderful production too. Queen's game, Queen Games, again, uh, yeah, they're probably one of my favorite uh, board game publishers. They do a fantastic job also. It, and it says 20 to 40. 20 yeah. to 40 minutes. Very, so this game is very quick Very also. quick. And I love that. Yeah, again, we... will put the sleep back on it later. Both get done working <laughs> for the day, but we want to play a board game. But hey, we can set that up and play it and have it put away in probably half an hour. And uh, that's that's kind of fun. Uh, let's see. What game we have? Three. No, four. I'm sorry. Four. You're still on four. Okay. So this is another tasty minstrel game called Gold West. And um, Gold West is easily one of my favorite games to play. Uh, it was a gift for Father's Day, and uh, we love to play it. It, um, it has a Moncala mechanism in it, uh, much like Trajan, except it goes straight instead of around a circle. You're coming out of a mine, yeah. mining, mining them to the surface. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. you got a mine for resources and stuff. Just a lot of fun. Uh, uh, Lori got this for me for a gift, and I have never won this game. <laughs> And I've made that well known. I've, we've played it, I don't know how many times, but I have never won the game. But that doesn't stop me from having a great time playing it because there's so much going on in this game. This is a, a game where you're going to think a little bit, and uh, it's just a lot of fun. Gold West uh, by J, J. Alex Kevern, and it's a wonderful game. I mean, it, I hope it's in your library. It's going to stay in ours forever, I can tell you that. Number three. One of the newer ones on our list, Horrifying. <laughs> Love co-op games. This co-op game has all the old Universal monsters in it that we love. It's got Wilbur and Chick in it yeah. from the from the um, Abbott, and Abbott and Costello movies <laughs> that we love to watch. Our grandkids love to watch them. They love these old monsters. We haven't played this one with them yet, but I know when we do, they're going to fall in love with it. You can adjust the difficulty in it, make it easier, make it harder. I just I just love playing it, and it plays quickly. Yeah, it does. It plays quickly. It's a lot of fun. It, it's... Yeah. It's a blast. Yeah. Trying to kill the mummy or Dracula or get Frankenstein and his bride to fall in love. And it's and it has a, a mechanism where you can make it more difficult or easier depending on how much time you have, really, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, you can play two monsters against two monsters or three monsters or four monsters, depending how ambitious you want to be and, and how much time you have. We've so only that, played it with cool. two. Yeah. And we beat no, we, it. But no, we played with three. Yeah. Didn't we? No, I don't think so. Okay. I think it was two. I can't remember. We played it against Dracula and the creature from the Black Lagoon. That's who we played against. It wasn't three? No. Okay. No, that's Okay. It. Yeah. But, so that's, that... but that's my number three, Horrified. Mm. My number three, Gen Jazz Deluxified. This is my third game in a row from Tasty Minstrel. They're making games right now, and I could have put Old West Impresario in this list also, because uh, that fits right here uh, where I'm talking about from Tasty Minstrel. They are just doing some magnificent board game design and publishing, and I just love Gentes. This is the deluxified version, and I, I just want to take a brief moment and talk about the Civilization Builder. We can play this game in about an hour, maybe a little more. A few weeks ago, we had a chance to play Tapestry, and we didn't think Tapestry really 
was better than Gentes. Uh, they're both civilization builders, and uh, Tapestry had a hundred dollar price tag. Uh, I think for sixty bucks I got this game. And the production, you, I can't, I can't. You don't have enough time for me to talk about the production of this game. It is amazing. Well, it's deluxified. Yeah, it's deluxified, and, and it was, but, but which is a word. Yeah, forty, forty dollars uh, cheaper than than Tapestry, and uh, just uh, the gameplay is solid and uh, we have a great time playing it and yeah i loved it immediately again i played it and it vaulted right into my uh one of my favorite games of all time gentez deluxified yeah and we can just like it came with a, a folded space insert oh yeah um that had to be assembled of course but it came with a nice folded space insert inside it these folded player boards are all right. notched um the board is rather uh, small-ish, which I, we love. We love boards that are small. And it has a special two-player side uh, for the board. But look at that insert. Man, that is magnificent. And look at the production of these figures. I'm telling you, it is just totally excellent. And uh, this is a first player marker, and you use time as one of the currencies in this game. Man, I, I can't say enough about this game. I'm in love with it, and I think Taste Your Menstrual Games can really take a yeah, bow yeah. for uh, the things they've done uh, in, recently in board gaming with Pioneer Days and this, Old West Empresario, Gold West, and uh, man. And the fold of space inserts are awesome because they don't add a lot of weight to the box. They're made out of that foam board. Yeah. And they work really well. So very cool game, Gentez Deluxified. Right, my number two is another new, newer game, Honga, by Gunter Burkhardt. And it's done by Haba, so the production of this is off the charts as well. But you're playing on a small board, your little player boards are all notched, you've got these little round discs that you use, that's the player mechanism of the game, whatever the hands on the discs are pointing to, are the action that you take in each corner of the board. One hand has to be petting Honga or he gets upset and comes and eats your resources. It's just a very, very fun game. Yeah, Honga's a big chunky wooden cat, so you get yep. that, and that's pretty cool. And uh, 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 this game plays very quick. I think the box is 45 minutes. We can play it Where's in Honga? half an hour. Uh, and that's, you know, you can set it up, play it, and put it away. There's Honga. In 45 minutes, and it's just a, a, a loads of fun. Uh, from Haba. They, they're known for their family weight games. Boards are notched so your resources don't slide around. That's always great. Yeah. And Adventureland is another one that we have by them that's a family weight type of thing. But uh, Honga, is a, yeah, it's a great game. Just tons of fun and very quick. And it's very beautiful to look at. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I've got one. Wait, I don't know what number we're on. Two. Two. Glenmore. And Glenmore is a tile laying game. And I've been looking for a copy of this game forever. It was out of print for the longest time. And now they have uh, uh, Glenmore Chronicles. And I wanted to get the original copy. I didn't want the Chronicles version because they changed some things. Uh, one of them being the size of the board. And I like this little box. You know, this game is spectacular. You know, let's face it, we're, we're getting along and our eyes aren't the best. So, <laughs> <laughs> no. we, yeah, so uh, looking clear across the table at a large game board becomes less attractive to us as time goes by. And this thing sits right in front of you and the gameplay, I, I, I don't know if you, you can check out some videos online, but Glenmore is superb and uh, could easily it, uh, be, I think on my list when I originally made it was uh, my second pick, but yeah, this is number two and uh, right now, but. <laughs> yeah. So it's still there. So it's still there. <laughs> but yeah, Glenmore by, oh yeah, Matthias Kramer, which we have, did he do Lancaster? I think he might have. But uh, yeah, Matthias Kramer, yeah, Glenmore. And my number one, it's a very simple, tiny game, Draftosaurus by Antoine Bauza and of seven Laurentian Lebrat, Ludwig Montblanc, and Theo Riviere. I guess I should say everybody. This game just... It's just quick, uh -huh. simple. I got this, the little bag off Board Game Geek, so that changes it a little bit. But it's just little boards. You have a winter side and a spring side. We, we moved to Florida from Ohio, and our grandkids call this the Florida side, and they call this one the Ohio side <laughs> when we play it. But they, they can play it. Adults can play it. It's just, it's just a lot of quick, fun, rolling a die. Placing these little dinosaurs, cute little dinosaurs. Most of my games are just cute, yeah. I guess. I, well, I, I mean, just like games because they're cute. I don't, 
There's more to this game than you think. But it's drafting. Yeah. You draft. You take a handful of dinosaurs. I think it's six. I can't remember. Five or six. You pick one and you pass the rest to your neighbor and you take theirs. So you're drafting. Thus, draft a yeah. You're drafting these little dinosaurs to place on your board. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. I just really like it. And one player will roll this die and the, di the die side that comes up is the side or the place, the location where you have to place that dinosaur. And you're not always going to want to put there. Except the person who rolled the die. Yeah. They can place wherever they want. So that's so. pretty hard. Yeah. And, <laughs> you, and you score different ways for specifically how you place them on your board. So that's pretty cool. And it's there's, again, a lot more to this game. Antoine Bauza, uh, of course, did uh, Seven Wonders, so he knows what he's doing. And this game really hit a home run for and us And it says 15 minutes yeah. and up. So it's just a, it's just a it's quick, quick yeah. simple, fun game. Gosh, I love that kind of thing, though. Okay, my number one game, uh, Castles of Burgundy. Uh, it plays very quickly. Um, um, this game is very easy to learn, but it's magnificent and elegant, and it's one of the most popular games ever created. And no matter how many times we play it, uh, I never get sick of it. And um, it's, uh, it takes place in the Loire Valley in France. We're rolling dice and selecting tiles and, and just having a great time. And it's the... got a whole box of different boards, too. Yeah. So you can change up how you play it by the uh, in uh, my opinion the best board game designer working <laughs> in the business Stefan Feld and I have many of his games and would let none of them go and this is right up there at the top so yeah Castles of Burgundy you hoo we went through those stacks okay here we go uh, those were 20 games that we're in love with that did not cross over with each other's top 20 games list yeah, so we had 10 on each list that did not cross over, and now we're going to do the 10 that did cross over. So we're giving you 30 game library <laughs> here uh, of terrific games that set up and play in an hour and get put away. But but you have to take this with a grain of salt because we're older and um, we don't we realize we don't have as much time left on this planet. There's a lot of young people, so we don't really want to have games that are, are huge and long and, and make our brains go on overload. So yeah, here we go with uh, our 10 crossovers. We're going to start with some Ten games we could agree on. Yeah, ten games we could agree on. We actually agreed on ten things. Yeah. Although all the games on her list I love. And so. I love all the games on his <laughs> list. <laughs> but uh, Lucas Hedrum... Or we wouldn't own them. <laughs> that's right. Designed this game called Subdivision, and Bezier Games was the publisher. And we have many games by Bezier. We have Suburbia, we have uh, Colony, I love that, and... Uh, Whistle Stop, I love. Yeah, Subdivision came out after Suburbia. Suburbia it was a big, big hit, made a big splash in the board gaming world, and uh, is still very, very popular. We prefer Subdivision. It plays quicker, and the tension is higher for us. Okay, in this game, unlike Suburbia, where you have the sprawling city, you have a board that you have to build it on, so it restricts you greatly as to what you can do. Plus, you have to roll a dice that comes up with a certain icon or color or something and and that tells you where you have to put that tile unless you have the money to, to pay to not do it. Money's so tight in this game it's hard to do that. But yeah, the tension is high in this game. It plays very quickly. We love it. Subdivision. Anything yep. you want to say about it? Or, nope. I, good? I like okay. it a lot better than Suburbia. I'm not sure why, yeah. but I think it's just because it's quicker and yeah. Maybe I like being confined in a space. Yeah, it plays one to four <laughs> so it has a solo mode. 45 minutes it says on the box, but I think we do it quicker than that. And Carpe Diem, one of our many Stefan Feld games. I guess you wouldn't call it a rondelle, but they, what would you call it? What, the movement the mechanism? mechanism? The selection mechanism? Yeah. I, I looks kind of like Star David, actually. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's a star. You have to follow the lines from, yeah. from where you are to where you can go. You can only go certain places where the lines take you to pick up tiles to build your little city that you're trying to build to get bonuses that are on the board. You have... And not end game and end round bonuses, I guess. Yeah, but with your governor or something that you're moving yeah, on. You're, I forget what yeah, yeah, and yeah, and you're selecting tiles from uh, uh, five different uh, points on the star, and you have to move to the, those positions, select a tile, put it on your uh, player board. But the the tension there is is where do I want to go next? So you have to think a couple of turns ahead. If you yeah. see something out there that you want to put on your board to help you score a certain way, yeah, you have to plan on that movement. How to get there. Yeah, and I think they had a problem with that and did something in uh, they reprint or something. They released the second one without the lines on it or something. Which I, I don't know. Yeah, I'd, I would, I'd draw them on there if I bought the new version yeah. because I like the lines. Oh, I like what it makes you do. Yeah, and we when we got this game, we were surprised how fast it played yeah. for a Stefan Feld game. It, it was quick. And uh, again, I think in 40. 45 minutes we had it played and done and and, and, and we're in love with it so 45 75 yeah. yeah so yeah it was it was two player it goes a, very quick it's a great game. carpe diem okay this game is called reef reef 
gosh, it just came out a couple years ago, maybe 2016, 17 maybe. 18. Oh, okay. <laughs> 2018. So it's pretty new, actually. And, and uh, we played this at uh, Dice Tower Con and with some friends and uh, enjoyed it immediately. I think that uh, I can compare it to Azul a little bit, and the reason why that we like this one better is that you have a hand of cards that are hidden from everybody. In Azul, everything that you own is common knowledge and we don't care for that because uh, you can screw over other players and in this one uh, you don't know what they're up to so you really can't mess with them <laughs> but, uh, too much too much <laughs> but uh, yeah you have a hand of cards where you're that you're going to play to to collect coral and to complete patterns it's a boatload of fun easy to teach uh, our son and daughter-in-law came over we taught them the game and our daughter-in-law ended up winning the game but uh, that's how easy the rule set is but it's a nice complex puzzle for you to try to figure out how to score the most points. And she did that and on her first try yeah. and, and, won the, and won the game. So that's pretty cool. Yep. Yep. Reef. Okay. Cacao. This is when we played at Orlando Games Con um, as well. Finished playing it and said, okay, we're buying that game. Yes, we did say that. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It's tile laying. The tiles have workers on them. It depends on how you lay the tiles where the workers are facing to what your actions get to be or how many times you get to take the action. Um, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, you have a player board that uh, has a water carrier on it and you start out in negative points and you're trying, you have to get up in the positive, yeah. or I mean, you want to. Yeah. Otherwise, at the end of the game, you're going to have to subtract those points off your total, but it plays very quickly. And I, I think we can play this game in 20 minutes and put it away and, and we're done. So, yeah, it says 45 yeah. on the box, but there's no way. Phil Walker Harding, the one, uh, yeah, same Phil guy Walker. that did Gizmos and uh, Gingerbread House and Baron Park that we also have all three of those other games and, and love his games. I mean, he hits us right where we like to play, you know, uh, right there, uh, <laughs> nice and quick and uh, yep. a medium complexity game. I'm, I'm, I uh, Again, I can't say enough about it. Cacao. This game is called Santa Maria and his designer is Christian Otsby and Elif Svensson. And uh, Christian Otsby does uh, design a game that we also have called Escape Zombie City and uh, by Queen Games and it's a it's a blast real-time uh, dice chucker but uh, Santa Maria is a dice drafting game and we love that mechanism you know we have yeah you know, several games yeah. we talk about pioneer days and colony we have that, that where you draft dice you, you know you simply roll dice and you're going to select the dice that is going to uh, give you an action that uh, is going to benefit you and then the other part of this game is laying down tiles uh, on a player board that uh, again you're building a point scoring machine uh, and a little bit of an engine builder so that you get uh, when you place those dice in those columns or rows you're going to get the benefits on those tiles so Santa Maria was one of the best games to come out that particular year well and it's a dice game but it doesn't rolling badly doesn't really affect you right because right. you can all the dice allow you to do something so it's not like you can say you're a terrible dice roller which I am which he says he is <laughs> and you can still play this game because bad Bad dice do the same thing as good dice. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> They're all usable. Came out in 2017, Santa Maria. It's a great, great game. One of the best games of that year. And then I have Istanbul with the Mocha and Bakish expansion by Rudiger Dorn. Also, Kennerspiel de Jars, 2014. Great game. You're setting up a little set of tiles, moving your markers around them, trying to collect rubies first and coffee since we have the Mocha and Bakish expansion. But it's just, it's... Again, an easy game to learn, but it's got a lot of strategy to it. Yeah, and we don't buy a lot of expansions. This game, when we picked it up, had the expansion on sale. It was in the same sale. So we went ahead and bought it and, uh, and played it the first time with the expansion and fell in love with it like that. So we haven't played it uh, without the without expansion. The expansion. Yeah. I don't know if I would want to. No. We're used to it that way. It uh, has a little bit, gives another layer to it to have to collect that coffee. And uh, we really, it's a pick up and deliver, one of my favorite board game mechanisms. I, we really enjoy it. Istanbul, I love the theme of it. I don't know. I don't know, something about that theme that I really enjoy, uh, uh, you know, the Middle East, you know, the Century Spice Road and stuff like that. So, yeah. No Century Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's Istanbul. Bull. And the next game we're gonna talk about is Quadropolis by Days of Wonder. And this is designed by Francois Gandon. I hope I say that, I hope that's a G, Gandon. So. But uh, this is the only Days of Wonder game I believe that we have. We've played many of their games. Yep. This is the only one that we've kept because uh, it just is the best one that we've played by them, that we, th we think, think anyway. Yeah. Uh, it's tiling, you're the mayor of a city and uh, you're gonna use your architects to 
uh, select uh, tiles from different rows um, and there's a certain rule set governing how you do that so it's kind of difficult to plan how you want to get those tiles place them on your board to score the most points possible and uh, it creates a lot of tension and we enjoy that in this game we just played it recently and uh, after we got done i was like laura this is one of the this game is amazing. Yeah. It's a beautiful production by Days of Wonder, and I hope they can duplicate something this magnificent. This is just the best game I've played for. Well, we're but trying to call our collection, and this is one of the ones like Via Nebula that we thought, okay, maybe we can let this one go. We've, we've got some other games that sort of do the same thing. Maybe we can let this one go. So we got it out and played it and said no. Yeah. This one's not going anywhere. This is like one of our top <laughs> games now just because yeah. uh, we just played it recently and uh, it's just... You realize how much fantastic. we actually liked it. Quadropolis right? by Days of Wonder. Yeah, go get that game. Oh, you should have done this one. Tasty yeah. Minstrel. Another Tasty Minstrel game. <laughs> <laughs> Citrus. This is another one that he just watched a playthrough several times on it and ordered it and it came in and we played it and I just said, okay, that, that's... I really like that game. It's a tile laying game. You're building little citrus plantations on your board. It actually says 50 minutes over here, but I don't think it took us that long. Yeah. Once you play it a few times, it goes rather yeah, quickly. Yeah, that's true. It's by Jeffrey Allers. It's just an amazing game. I, yeah. I really enjoyed it. It's probably my favorite tile laying game. Yeah, ah, gosh, it's I don't know. up have there. So it would be up there. Gosh, Tasty Mr. Games again. Uh, knocked it out of the park uh, with this game. It is fantastic. Um, I just can't imagine this not being in someone's uh, library, board gaming library. We just love it. Every time we get it out, it's just fantastic. Yeah, we just happened to find it on sale somewhere yeah. and but, uh, uh, picked it up. But yeah. yeah, it's great. Citrus, what a great game. Oh, my turn? Yep. Uh, and Sansuchi <laughs> <laughs> by Michael Kiesling. Yeah, of Kramer and Kiesling. And uh, this is a tile laying game. And I tell you what, after uh, we got it and played it one time, uh, we fell in love with it. it. Plays two to four players, and we can get this game done again and uh, set it up and play it and get it done in uh, less than an hour. Well, it's got a whole bunch. These are two sided. I mean, there's all kinds of variability to the setup that you can do, so you're not playing the same game all the time. It's. But it has kind of a cool selection uh, uh, movement mechanism on your player board and stuff. So uh, it's just a lot of fun. We, we uh, Again, a lot of these games, uh, one of our, our favorite mechanisms probably is tile laying. Probably. Uh, tile laying and dice drafting yeah. appear to be a theme. Carpe diem. Um, <laughs> Santa Maria has a, a tile laying mechanism subdivision when you're building a city. Mm -hmm. But uh, Sansucci, uh, just a blast of a game by Ravensburger. And uh, yeah, again, we, we've, had, we have, we've had this now for a while. And uh, we'd never get rid of this game. Is that it? No. One I've more? Got, I've got okay. Turia over here. Okay. That we just picked up pretty recently, even though it's not a real new game. When was this from? 2016. Decided to buy this instead of Raja of the Ganges. Yes. Same uh, designers. Yeah, it is by Inca and Marcus Brand and Michael Reinick. It's an awesome game. You have little towers. I'm just going to get the towers up. You have little towers that you turn as you play and on top of the towers there's the actions um, shows you what the action is and it's also on the face of the towers but the towers change so you never know where you're going to be or what what you're going to what your action is going to be available to you because the towers are always turning yeah but you want to yeah you're, you're trying to plan you're trying to watch the towers and and you're trying to plan and say oh I, um i want that tower to spin the other way yeah. so that i can have that particular uh action or benefit and another thing about the game that's pretty cool is you're all using the same avatar so it's like you know dorothy the tin yeah. man and you're a group you're a group yeah. you're a group that's moving around the board so you'd be like it would be another player's turn and you, and you don't want to say it but don't move that over there you know because i want to go over here because you're all using that same group player you're a, yeah so that's you're a cluster that's kind of that's kind of freaky because uh you're you're trying to plan to pick things up and if someone's going to move that avatar away from where you want to go and that can be frustrating and well, that's that creates that tension i mean so. you think it'd be a co-op game because yeah. you're all moving together but you're not cooperating you're not so cooperating. It's, it's difficult to do sometimes but it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Plays two to four. Uh, it says on the box, 60 minutes. Uh, it's That's accurate. Uh, set up and take down. I mean, we can get it all done in 60 minutes. And that's Toria by Inca and Marcus Brand. Uh, 
geez, one of my favorite games by them for sure. I, you know, I played Raja of the Ganges, and that's an, an excellent game also, but it's a little complex, a lot going on in that game. This is more our speed, yeah. and uh, this is something that... Uh, I uh, loved Raja really of the Ganges. Yeah, we but loved it's it. another one of those that probably wouldn't see the table as often yeah. because it takes a little longer to yeah. play. Probably so takes we 90 minutes to two hours. Yeah. To get that one. So we opted for this one, and it has uh, just... And that's cute. It's a cute game, too. It's, it's like one of the cutest games we have. Hey, so, so folks, that's it. That's 30 games. And if my library was just these 30 games, I would be so happy. I mean, because those are beautiful board games. He's lying. <laughs> that, uh, he could never have only 30 board games. Those are our favorite <laughs> games right now to play. And uh, again, because they play quickly, and we want to play something that uh, is uh, a lot of fun, that works our brains just enough and that, uh, that we have a good time and get it done in, in an hour. So those are uh, some choices for you guys to look at when you're trying to find games that you're going to know and love uh, uh, and play them quickly. And because, you know, uh, you know we just, uh, we've played a lot of complex games. We had Gloomhaven and played six scenarios of that, yep. and it didn't make it. Yeah. It didn't make the cut. It just wasn't that much fun for us. Uh, too, it's too big. Too, too big. Uh, everything about too it much. was too big, yeah. And, and uh, games like uh, the Gallus and Venus, uh, we've owned and played and, and, loved. and loved them. I mean, but just could not keep them because uh, uh, we just don't have time to play. And we own too many games. <laughs> and those didn't make the cut. So, yeah, <laughs> they're out of here. But uh, um, yeah, so here's 30 games that are magnificent. Every one of them play smoothly. Uh, you can learn them quickly. And thanks for watching this video. And do you have anything you want to say? No, not really. Okay. Well, hey, that was a lot of fun. I would say keep on board gaming because it's the best hobby on the planet. Yeah, and see you next time on Bones Collector. We love every one of you guys. Bye-bye. But we didn't say. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Make sure you like and subscribe. He needs his cue person back there. <laughs> My editor is hanging out with me.